action good to go all right guys we are out here by my favorite small little local lake where i literally grew up fishing out of the bandit the infamous bandit and today we came a long way from the bandit we've got some major changes for 2024 and in a lot of ways you know but overall very good changes you know a lot of really great opportunities great partnerships have been formed and gonna walk y'all through the tow rig and boat for this year so leave a comment right now quick before you see the boat what color did i get this year because the big change is the color so without further ado i'm gonna show y'all the number one biggest change that we made this year you gonna follow me or you gonna cut it we've actually made a couple yeah but this is the biggest change don't show nothing. The biggest change is having a baby probably. That's a big change, okay? 2024 is going to be a lot different in a lot of ways. But the biggest M mostly change. Mostly less sleep for me, the same amount of sleep for Kyle. I don't know if it's the same amount of sleep, but you can see right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the biggest change of the year so far as you can tell. We got 10 foot power pole blades instead of the eights. Sure, so we that tall. that's the i did this based on the schedule basically our schedule this year i feel like the 10 foot power poles are really going to benefit things you know kind of benefit the way that i think we're going to have to fish in a bunch of the tournaments this year so that's the that's the number one change everything else is kind of kind of the same i would say so 10 foot power poles instead of eights and then we'll do a you know just a quick walkthrough of the boat you can see it right there mercury pro xs 250 running that again and th marine atlas jack plate on the back that's kind of what we did you know that's it and then kind of look the color of the boat right here you know everything's pretty similar we say we went with a charcoal with the you know white stripe instead this year or is it not that similar not really it's a big difference we are running a icon lx20 this year that's the biggest biggest change that that we have made by far is the icon lx20 love this boat i've actually had this boat for a while month and a half maybe close to two months got everything rigged out on it really just got all my electronics where i kind of i wanted them so kind of been piecing it together it's kind of why we've been waiting on the boat walk through and unveiling is because like been kind of getting stuff in slowly and now the boat is completely decked out like it is tournament ready at the moment so i'm ready to start the season and super excited about running this boat but let's jump we'll do kind of a boat walk through that sound good hunter mm -hmm. number one thing back here this is probably my favorite part of the boat is how clean this is back here but you can see you can actually take these off take these lids off by using these screws and taking them off and you can kind of slide them and get them off but using rely on batteries this year i will have two 36s parallel on this side and then i have two 12 volts parallel on that side so it's in my power pull uh, blade pumps right here this is my th marine g juice reservoir right here fill that up with g juice and then it actually the live wells which i'll get in that a little bit more but there's a reason this canister is here but you can see super nice and clean i'm only running two batteries so i've got a little cubby right here that i've got my crust city weigh-in bag in and this sucker's had some fish in it for sure so far since i've had that bag and this boat right here has had some fish in it we've probably fished seven or eight tournaments out of this boat maybe more like i fished you want any of them? Well, we've, we've won a couple out of this boat, you know, no real big ones, but did really good in some and then have definitely won some. Like we've probably won three or four tournaments out of this boat so far. So let's go over into the other battery box or back compartment, whatever you what want to call it. What prop are we running? So I've been playing with props because obviously I've never ran the Icon LX20 before. And so right now I've got a Mercury fury 24 on it and i've ran a 23 and i've ran a tempest 24 i've done that with every single boat i've ever had i, I always play with props I, i've pl played with a lot of things just to see you know which one runs better when it's cold which one runs better when it's hot which one runs better with the weight like this which one runs better with with it loaded in two people by myself which i don't care about i mean i can get any boat to run low to mid 70s by myself um tournament load is different when you put a tournament load in a boat it just it, it like mutes everything down and that's the performance that i want you know like boat that i was running last year yeah i could take stuff out of it by myself I, I i can make it run 76 you know but i can't put everything in it and make it run that you know in this boat when i first got it i mean i, I ran at 74 you know but in a tournament load 
I can't make it run that, you know, and that, that's just all boats. They don't go that fast when you've got all these graphs up front, Humber 360, all this type of stuff. So tournament load is why I play with props is I want somebody riding with me, live wheels full, full tank of gas. That's what I do whenever I'm testing. More tackle than I'll run all year, typically. Like when I'm breaking in a boat, when I'm testing a boat, I put a lot of tackle up front, you know, a normal amount or more than a normal amount. Cause usually by a tournament, I take a lot of stuff out. So right now though, we've got a Fury 24. To answer your question, Hunter, quickly, Fury 24. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very quick, was it? No, that was long. That was long, okay. I like it, in depth. Okay, this side, we have both of our cranking batteries. We have two Reliant 12 volt, 100 amp hours. I got a prop, spare prop holder right here. I actually put this in myself. Really, you know, I got a lot of clearance clearance around the batteries and stuff but what is it no, you like it this so, is fancy yeah spare spare prop Tom holder had his spare prop in a bag i have in the, yeah in the back i usually keep my spare prop in a bag in this compartment and i don't have to do that this year so power pole charge right here that's a. Uh, I mean i've just got so used to running that thing and depend on it so much now that i really just you know can't i don't feel like you can really go without it now i, I would rather run lead acid batteries with a power pole charge than to run lithiums without it that's how much i like the power pole charge but the system that i'm running is the optimal setup for the power pole charge also so really excited about that you can see how down the bilge area everything's really clean everything's mounted super clean there's not a lot of wires hanging everywhere got them zip tied up routed the way that i want to route them you know so re really excited about this but spare prop right here two cranking batteries and my you know graph batteries right here power pole charge that's kind of the extent of the also, you can get to your batteries from like the side of the boat instead yeah, of yep. the back. From I can get them from I can get to them from anywhere yeah. right here. And then obviously, if I need to work on the bilge area down there, it's a little bit easier if you take these lids off. So you know, I would take those off and get down in there. But like to mount my through hole transducer, take the lids off. It's a little bit easier. But anyways, that's how I feel. All right, back compartment. I'm gonna show y'all it. You wanna hop up in the boat? Sure. Let's hop up in the boat. Wait, show them this. So this is actually the live well pump out and it actually comes with a hose that goes in and turns and you can actually take the hose and put it in the middle of the boat to pump water into your tournament bag your weigh-in bag i'm not going to use the hose you know just me personally i don't want to have it in the boat just because it takes up space and i'm just not going to use it so i'll pop that open hold my bag right here pump out water into it and that's the that's the pump out pumps out actually a really good stream like it, it's got a lot of power behind it but anyways that's it hop up in the boat and go through it. You can see one of the biggest things about the Icon is it's got this contour right here. And I don't know what, there's not really a name for it, so I call it the contour. But the boat is kind of flat in the back, kind of like saltwater boats, because Icon is owned by HCB Yachts or their partner companies, wherever you want to, however you want to say it. But basically, you got a lot of width to the back, kind of a standard size boat in the back. And then right here, you got this contour and it bubbles out. It gives you a ton of width up here. So I was actually over at Widawi Marine. We had a lot of boats in there um, a couple of days ago. And from right here where you stand, this boat is six to nine inches wider than almost every other boat right here where you stand. And that's what's important to me is this is where I'm standing. I, I might have seven or eight rods right here, seven rods on the other side that I'm standing up here. Having a lot of width right here is what matters the most to me. So it's, you know, compared to some boats, I, I'm not going to bad mouth any other boats because you know it's, it's a little bit of give and take with all that but right here is six inches wider than the boat i was running and nine inches wider than some other boats so that's, also when kyle fishes like. right here i like to stand right here yep so i have more space and so you can turn it trolling down a little bit oh yeah hunter likes to sneak up behind me so whenever we're fishing <laughs> i'll be sitting there and i'll flip into a tree or skip on our boat dock and then I'll put my foot um, in between his legs. And, and she'll just, just turn that foam or like, get that sucker off of 100, turn that thing down to about 30% instead of 100%. So that's that's kind of why she likes to be up here. She got a little more control over the trolling motor. And obviously, I've got a ton of questions in the past about um, my motor guy trolling motor. And I really, really like that trolling motor. I was a big fan of that trolling motor. But due to some changing things in the industry, you know, there's not going to be service for the motor guide this year and at the same time hummingbird or, or hummingbird and mincota came out with the mincota ultrex quest and i used this trolling motor on one of my buddy's boats and it is a lights out trolling motor so i wanted it for this year i feel like it's a better it's a bigger advantage for me to have the brushless trolling motor with a ton of power i mean this thing pulls this boat right here 
3.9 miles an hour. Like that is unbelievable. I've had to start fishing with the trailer motor on seven instead of 10. And what? I mean, every trailer motor I've ever had, and I've ran other Minn Kotas, I've ran every brand there is. I pretty much leave them on 10 exclusively in everybody's boat that I get in. This one, I literally have to turn it down to seven to fish at my normal pace. So it's unbelievable. I love this trailer motor so far. I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, big been lights out. So obviously, Minn Kota Ultra X Quest, I really believe, you know, I made the change and it's all about what I feel like gives me the best advantage. And I feel like this was the best trolling motor out right now and this one I wanted to ruin. So that's what we went with. Up here on the front, I have a 16 inch Garmin for live scope and then I have a 13 inch Hummingbird Apex for 360 and also mapping. I'm, I'll probably put a third unit on at some of the tournaments, just depends. I'll, I'll have a have an adapter for my Boat Logics bracket right here so that I can actually add a third one and slide this one over and then you know kind of get it squared up. But if I feel like I need to, I'm gonna run more grass. But y'all that watch my videos, y'all know how I fish. Like I like to fish shallow. I like to power fish. I like to jump up and down. I like to go a little bit faster in my boats. You know, like I'm a, I'm a moving type of a person. I'm not a getting an area and kind of, you know, really pick it apart. So for me, I didn't want to have a bunch of grass up front that I got to trip over and stuff. And I mean, I have fished with three grass up front before, not a big fan of it. It is starting to get more and more necessary in the sport. So if I need to put those on there to be competitive, I will. But for the most part, I like how clean it looks having having the two graphs up here even though they are big graphs but still to me it just feels more like bass fishing whenever it's not too much stuff on the front but there's a lot of stuff up front but anyways Humberto Trex Quest we have 13 Apex 16 and then we've got the live scope transducer right here Humberto 360 and that's about it we've got our switches up here I mount my power pole buttons I, I set mine to one tap so I press them one time they go all the way down I press them up one time, they go all the way up. That's what I like, that's my most efficient way. Sometimes when I'm trying to get under stuff or I'm bed fishing, I'll move my poles halfway down just so that they're not quite as much noise and don't have to travel quite as far whenever I do see one. And I do that from my console. I'll just drop them a little bit. So I always leave my one at my console on two tap and I leave my one up here on one tap just cause I feel like throughout the year, I like to move them down halfway. I like to have that option, you know? So I got the upgraded step system on i got the upgraded trailer they got underwater lights so whenever i back my boat into the water the lights come on illuminate the trailer really really well i got the step ladder the steps i've never had these before so i've never had steps and you know whenever I, on this boat it's not as important but on my last boat i really wished i had steps because i had two graphs up front and my boat was a little bit narrower so it's kind of hard to get in and out of so i went with the steps this year and i mean they you really don't know how much you use them until you have them and i've never had them so i didn't know what i was missing and now i don't think i'll ever have a boat again without steps because i thought they were something kind of for like you know old men needed them or people that you know had had problems but they, they help a ton like it's unbelievable how much they help so i'm gonna crawl up in here hunter yeah hold on let's look at babe so let's just look at this front deck this thing's unbelievable. Like, huge front deck. Let me get back here. Look at this thing. This thing is huge, man. And I got a 20 foot. I got the LX20. 20 foot, 10 inches. They make a bigger one. My buddy Jacob Wheeler, he's going to run the bigger one. I, I believe he's going to run the bigger one. 2110. Like, unbelievable the size of this boat. But anyways, rod locker. I mean, it's it's uh, pretty standard with a twist, I would say got a lot of rods in there but you can see there's these shelves in the back where the butts go and that just kind of helps me so whenever it's just a straight thing on the back you start stacking rods and your reels get on top of each other and it kind of makes it hard to like get them in there efficiently this one has where i can lay them on bottom and then on this step and then on this step and get a lot of rods in here don't know how many rods i can get in there i'm imagining it's somewhere in the 35 to 40 rods range but uh you know that's what rod locker looks like so it's got that padding on it around it and i actually really like the padding because it just keeps your reels from getting so much rash on them throughout the course of the year so that's good that's something that some boats have some boats don't some of them are still carpeted it's just you know a lot of different stuff but see in here i've already got a lot of stuff in there got a lot of my tackle got some crusty stuff in the box of air got got a box of just random stuff i've thrown in here but you know this is this is probably about a tournament load for me 
I don't keep much more it's stuff. Deep. Yes, yeah, yeah. huge. Hu this is a giant storage box. Like, I don't even know how how you could fill it up. I will never fill it up. This is literally more stuff than I will use in, in almost any tournament this year. Like, I just don't keep that much stuff. You know. So so for me, th this is basically a tournament load, if not a little bit more than what I'll have in a tournament. I'm so, a little disappointed. In why? What is this doing? Okay, so we've been fishing some uh, some team derbs around here and uh, been catching one or two on treble hooks here and there occasionally. So we have had a net in the boat, which is, I have to take that out before we start the Elite Series season, but do have it in here for right now. So got a little day box right here. See, I've got extra map cards in here. Got an extra prop for right now. Got two Rappler scales, some gloves, all that type of stuff in, in this day box. This is kind of going to be just a kind of catch all for whatever. I'll put some baits in there. Just as you can see right now, it's kind of just got a hodgepodge of stuff in there. And that's that's really what this box is going to be. And then. Is that where you're going to keep your scale for the tournament? I don't know. I'm, tr I'm kind of playing with the idea. I've got one in here too. <laughs> How many scales do you have? I got three scales in here. See, I got a rapid scale in here also. I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to do yet. <clears throat> this is a really cool, it's got a storage bin right here, but also underneath it, it's got all the wiring for the, you know, like there, you can't get to under the console from the bottom. So you get to it from the top, makes it really easy for rigging the boat actually. So all my wires run through to my graphs right here. All my wire, all my power wires are down there, but we've got this little drop-in box that goes right there. And I'm gonna put my coal tags and scale probably in here. I think I like that the best because I catch a fish, I sit down, I pull this open and then I can get to my stuff. But for the most part, you know, I, I'm not 100% sold yet on if that's where I want it or if I want it in here, so. You're gonna have to get used to not opening that drawer. Hmm? You're, not, you're gonna have to get used to not opening that drawer and grabbing your thing. Yep, that you is know, true. You know, you probably get like train, train your body to like do that motion. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it, you, you get used to it though after a while. But anyways, let's look in this rod locker now. This is a shorter rod locker. I mean, this one's this one's more standard. See, I got my spinning poles in there, my light in there. You know, like I put my spinning rods on the other side always, and th those are seven foot three spinning rods that one one's a seven four they fit in there really super well i don't know how long of a rod you can put in this side i think you can put a nine and a half foot rod in that side i'm not sure how long you put in this side but i know i can get the seven four in there no problem you could probably put a seven six maybe an eight footer in this side but pretty this this one is more of a standard rod locker that you see in a lot of boats without the shelves and stuff like that but that's kind of the front side you know it's it's a standard layout for a boat w with some twists, but for the most part, that's what I like. I don't like weird compartments and crazy compartments. I like stuff where, you know, like if I if I, I put my stuff where I where I want it as far as in order of how I'm gonna use it that day. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. All right, guys. So the cooler on this is absolutely massive. You can see I've been fishing some buddy tournaments. We got a little bit of trash in there, but a lot of bottles of water. Got my new Rapala scale box in there. I just opened a new, a new one up for this tournament that we fished yesterday. So got some stuff in there, but uh, absolutely massive. It's got a little bag, a little mesh pouch right there where you can put granola bars, sandwiches, whatever you want to put in there. I'll, I'll probably put mostly granola bars and beef jerky and stuff in the top, just so, you know, keep it out of the water and stuff like that. But then you got in here, we got a center storage box. Same thing. What I really like about this one is it's got a light inside it. And I've had other boats with center storage boxes right here that did not have a light. And it makes it really hard to find your stuff. But as right here, I got a little lighter to burn braid with. I put my keys in there, my wallet, stuff in there. I've got a lot of gloves, you know, because we're fishing and it's cold. I got some TH Marine wave away for it, you know, for my graphs. I keep a lot of stuff in there, but you know, center storage box, pretty standard. At the console, Hunter has made the transition. We got two Hummingbird Apex 13s, another Boat Logics mount right here. What is it? I can see myself. Oh, two Hummingbird Apex 13s. You know, pretty standard setup. Got, I'll run this one mostly on side imaging, this one mostly on map. The cool, coolest part of the boat is right here. You can see right here, I've got all my, my panel. I, I can control my live wells, you know, turn it to recirculate, auto. If you press auto, it'll fill them up. It'll automatically recirculate. After they get full, there's a float switch. It turns them off from fill, turns them on recirculate, and you can set it to go ahead and pump in G-Juice. You can set it to go ahead and turn on the chiller plate, which I'll show you on just a second. And you got all those options. I can also pull it up, look at my boat, and see the live well temperature, my cranking battery voltage, my trolling battery voltage, how much fuel I've got. Then right here, I've got my trim, my jack plate right here, my RPMs, T 
temperature, which obviously is not crunk, so we don't have temperature on there, but you can see all that stuff from right here. So really, really cool. Got USB ports down there beside the key, a little place to hold your phone. I'm running a TH Marine hot foot. You know, all that type of stuff is, you know, a little twist on it. The hot foot's pretty standard, but other than that, that's the, that's the console of the boat. That's where I spend a lot of time, but not near as much time as I spend up there on the front deck. So let's go straight into the live wheels. Well, you can see what kind of forage they're, they're eating here because we fished a tournament yesterday. We got a lot of crawfish in there right now. So I need to clean that up a little bit. But the live wheels are blue. Live wheels fill all the way up to right here. So they, may, they, they get extremely full, less sloshing inside the live wheels than a lot of other boats. But the live wheels are blue. And that's supposed to make the fish less active. Like it's supposed to make them jump around less. And surprisingly, I was skeptical at first, but it actually seems like they jump around less when I open the live well. That may sound silly, but they use that in some of these saltwater boats. And they, they found that the blue live wells for the bait tanks made the bait live a little bit longer and also be less stressed and then like jump around less. So they put a blue live well in here. I can still see the fish in there really, really well, but I mean, it really does seem to make the fish less active whenever you open the live well. Because everybody has seen when you open the live well, it makes the fish just jump around like crazy. You know, and that's, it, it hasn't happened so far, but it has been a little bit colder. So we'll see how it does in the summer if they, if they do that or not. So on this side, got my cool tags from yesterday. And that right there is the chiller plate. I could turn that on and actually control the temp of my live well. So fishing for those smallmouth, fishing in the summer this year in June, not going to have to carry ice even though i've got a cooler where i can carry more ice than i've ever had before not going to have to carry ice because of the chiller plate i'm going to be able to just kind of turn those live wells down four or five degrees and maintain that temperature all day so really excited about that like that's going to make it a lot easier on me and i have to fool with ice and, and not have to pour g-juice so that's going to be really cool the fish alive more. huh and to keep the fish alive more. yeah it's just it's better for the fish this patent the, the automated system is patent pending right now from icon so They've actually reached out to other boat manufacturers and tried to get them to use it because, I mean, there's so much money involved in the saltwater world. What works to keep that bait alive works to keep bass alive also, you know, and that's what they have found. And they're, they're using that for bass fishing as well. So look over here. This is a standard storage box. I got my striker rain suit in there right now. This is kind of stuff that I put, I took off while fishing whenever I got too hot. I've got my life jacket in there and the a little box of tools. You can see these are drop out, drop in trays. You see how, how well the bottom of the boat is finished. Like underneath the trays and stuff, it looks just, I mean, the bottom of the boat underneath here looks just as good as the, the top of the boat, basically. So drop in trays makes it easy to work on stuff. Anything goes wrong, like, I mean, power stuff back here, the ground wires and stuff. So, I mean, really, really easy. Like kind of love the way this boat is set up so kind of kind of a a pretty decent walkthrough i think we covered just about everything the main thing is the ride of this boat I had a cameraman in this boat a little while ago and i had been kind of just barely cruising around all day and we, and then at the end of the day was riding back to the ramp and we sat down and put all the camera equipment away so i really gave it some gas and got it up on pad and he was like hold on do that again so we came off pad and I put it on pad again. He's like, dude, that's the best hole shot I've ever seen. And, and it is true. Like this boat has the best hole shot I've, I've, I've ever seen of any boat. And I mean, it's, it drives really well. I mean, super sporty. It does not feel like a boat that's 20 foot, 10 inches long. Like it drives, drives like a, like a little go-kart. So pretty cool. But this is the boat that I'll be running this year. Love this thing. I, I've ran hummingbirds for most of my life, except for last year. Obviously I ran Lorances and, you know, <clears throat> had a really good result last year, but I felt like the hummingbirds kind of fit my style a little bit better so i like that and then now we're going to go to the tow vehicle so if y'all don't know we had a baby lincoln and felt like since he was you know getting up in age now being i don't know a few a few weeks old that uh he needed him a new truck so it was what we decided we let him pick it out and we'll see if he did a good job or not right, without further ado there it is right there we did go ahead and jump on the toyota tundra train you know there they're a big sponsor of bass. They help us out a lot whenever we buy a truck. Makes it super easy. Another uh, One thing, shout out to Milton Rubin Toyota in Augusta. I mean, I've never bought many cars, but I have been around people that have bought cars, and most of the time, it seems like pulling teeth. And I know we bought Hunter a car, and it was kind of like pulling teeth. 
Like it was. It's like an all day thing. You got to stay yeah, there all but day, like, sign a dude, bunch of stuff. They hooked it up as far as the ease of buying a truck. It really was. Like I felt like. I felt like it was going to be a way bigger ordeal than it was. Basically, told them what they wanted. They said it would be here this day. And then when they got in, they called us, worked everything out, and delivered it to us. Like, that's unbelievable. So, I mean, it was it was super easy. Like, we, we, probably, we probably spent 20 minutes on the phone with them, max, you know? And he signed, like, two papers. Yeah, like, it was like... There we go. So I mean, really, really cool. But this is a truck. This is this color is called Lunar Rock. It's a kind of like a, the cement gray was. This is the new version of that. But right now, we're gonna do a couple things to it. But right now, it's just kind of got the the basic package on it. But pulled a boat with it already to a couple of tournaments, and I like this thing a ton. I mean, it's a obviously went from a 2012 to a 2024. So you know, big difference. But there's the man right there. That's whose truck it's going to be. That's whose boat this is. Let's just be honest. Like, he's the boss of everything right now. That's little Lincoln. Lincoln Lux Welcher right there in the back seat of the truck. And uh, he's enjoying it, obviously. He's very comfortable in that thing and having himself a, a T-I-M-E, as they would say. It's normal. <laughs> so, anyways, this is the... I mean, it's got the leather seats. we got the big screen in the front, obviously, but it's the SR5. That's kind of like the top of the line SR5. So I don't know, but it's got the V6 in it with the with the two turbos. So far, you know, super happy with it. The ride, I mean, it rides really, really well. Like it's unbelievable how good how good it actually rides. But that's the new truck. That's the new ride. That's the whole new rig. So shout out to Icon. I'm super excited about that partnership. Like I've never talked to a boat company that's as receptive. And as hungry to build a better bass boat every single day like it like everybody at the plant every single day their goal is just get better just improve what do we need to do what do we need to work on and i mean it's hard to find a flaw in a boat like that like there's there's almost nothing so i mean it's pretty that they covered their bases on it and pretty good rig if i do say so myself so without further ado i'm going to catch a bass right there <laughs> 